here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. But here's the thing. The states have lost their minds. There's some of the, the gun ban states, I call them, the ones that don't respect your Second Amendment rights, who don't respect you, don't respect your ability or desire to take care of yourself, to protect yourself, protect your family, to provide your own protection, to not outsource it to the government. They're passing these laws. They're calling them Bruin Response Laws. The Supreme Court passed the Bruin or gave us the Bruin decision. And, and then after that, these states are going, yeah, no, we don't like that. We don't approve of that. We're going to pass these laws that actually restrict gun rights even though the Supreme Court says we can't do that. And it's happened all over the place. And one of the places where it's happening is out in Washington State. Joining me right now to talk about that and a few other most interesting things about guns, Ryan Donahue from Stag Arms. Hey, Ryan, how are you, sir? I'm doing awesome, Tom. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing well. You've been a busy beaver, man. Yeah, we. Uh, I actually, half our team is still out there in Washington, but I just got back yesterday. It's it's pretty incredible how crazy it is out there right now. All right, so start from the beginning. For those who aren't following, first of all, you guys aren't in Washington. Why are you people in Washington? Yeah, so um, we, we what we did was um, we, we had a lot of our big dealers, a lot of our big customers out there for SAG um, needing uppers and lowers and a lot of different stuff. And there's so many people in the doors that they can't even get, you know, deliveries from – UPS and different stuff because the lines are so huge. So we said, you know what? Wow. Let's just go set up a forward operating base out there in Washington, send in a ton of product, and we'll literally go rent some SUVs and deliver product to everybody um, that's out there that needs product in Washington. And, 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 of course, this is all being prompted by what Washington is doing and has done in terms of outlawing regular old rifles that are what I like to call modern rifles. When do, and I don't know, I can't remember. When does this go into effect, or where are we? Well, it would have, where we are right now is um, it's it is just for everybody who's listening. It is the worst legislation that I have seen so far on our rights because it doesn't only outlaw the rifles; it's everything. So, all these mom and pop gun shops. So every trigger. So think about you know Timney triggers and. Um, all of these different components, so forward assist, barrels, everything that you could possibly need for that style of rifle mm -hmm. is toast. Um, so what, what's going on right now is that legislation has been read in uh, this past Thursday. So it'll make it to the governor's desk here probably. It probably did it on Friday or Monday morning. And then whenever they do decide to sign, it's law. So there is no, you know, even an hour, say it's whenever it's signed, it's it's, it's on. There's no grace period or anything. It just it, it happens. So that's going to be happen probably within a matter of you know, a few dozen hours from when we're talking right now. And so people are in gun stores today all over the state trying to get their guns. And you went out there with your team to try to help the gun stores process all of these sales. Yeah, and and you know the other crazy part about it, Tom, is they the the government also put a 10 day wait on any rifle. So if you're buying a complete rifle, there's a 10-day wait. So it's near impossible to get a complete rifle. So what people are doing is they're buying tons and tons of either complete lowers or strip lowers and then parts and everything uh, to build them yeah. at home. So so if you, what you're saying is if you went in Friday, two days ago as we're talking, and you were to buy a complete rifle, there's a 10-day wait. And by the time the 10 days is up, this law will have gone into effect and you can't get your rifle. Correct. So a lot of the firearms companies, especially us, were, you know, offering refunds on those different types of things. But yeah, mm -hmm. if you were to buy a complete rifle on Friday, uh, we would send it out. It would be sitting in the gun store. You have to wait 10 days. If it goes into effect, you can't take your rifle home. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, I know the gun stores really appreciate it. And, and clearly the consumers appreciate it. The people who want to exercise their Second Amendment rights, what you guys are doing. If you would, let's back up, because we have known you in the farms industry in a couple of different places, and now you were at Stag. Explain what you're doing there, and maybe a little bit of background for those who may either not have heard of Stag or maybe heard of them, and then they're thinking, what happened to those guys? Are they still around? 
Yeah, so um, I have been in the industry for a while, so this this position opened up, and it's not every day that you get the ability to run a firearms company, so that's not one that you pass up on. Um, <laughs> right. So it's Stag, this is Stag's 20th anniversary. So for those that know Stag, they'll remember that it started in Connecticut, and really Stag came to the presence that it was uh, with the AR platforms, with left eject system, so one of the only companies, uh, the first to, to set up the left eject, mm -hmm. so for righties and lefties. And, you know, SAG was synonymous with the AR for a very long time. Right. Um, kind of, you know, total dad joke here, but went stagnant for <laughs> quite a few years. And now uh, we're bringing them back in a big way. We have a lot, a lot of new toys for everybody to come and see. Um, there's been great reaction to what we've been putting out here at SHOT Show and soon at the NRA Show. Okay, so you're going to be showing at the NRA Show in Indianapolis, and that's God, it's three, like three weeks now. It's just going to be coming up. Yeah, we got three weeks. So um, what we did, Tom, was we have you know a Pursuit rifle, so a Pursuit AR. So it is a hunting-style AR in a beautiful burnt bronze color. It's got Wyoming leather on the stock. Um, not only when you open the box does, is it awesome because it smells like a new car, but when you're out in the hunting stands, uh, those cold mornings to have the leather on your face instead of the plastic <laughs> is amazing. So okay. uh, Timney trigger, everything on the gun is just fully upgraded. So we have those um, that we just recently launched, as well as they're called our Spectrum guns. But what I like to call them is our 50 Shades guns. So they're literally... 50 shades of FDE and 50 shades of OD. Holy so cow. all the colors don't match on purpose. Right. And then so the biggest thing, which anybody who's going to the NRA show, uh, please come and see. Uh, Stag has a bolt action rifle. So um, the real roots of it, what we've been working on is how do we allow the user who can customize an AR? You know, you can turn your AR into whatever you want it to look like. Right. You want to go shoot a competition with it. You want to go hunt with it. Why can't I do the same thing with my bolt gun? So we literally took the uh, rear pivot pin from an AR-10, and that's what's on our back stock of our bolt gun. So you'll see from Stag coming up here in the future that you're going to have lots of different stocks and forehand options. So if you want to go shoot a PRS match on a Friday and then come back home, change it out, change out the barrel, change out all the stuff, and then take it up into the mountains to go hunt, you'll be able to do that on the same platform. So what do you call the bolt rifle? So it's in our pursuit family. So the, the pursuit line covers all of our hunting rifles from ARs to the bolt action rifle. Okay. Sounds good. And you mentioned that, you know, a lot of people would remember Stag as being in Connecticut. You got to tell them where you are now. Yeah. So we are in uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Um, one of the coolest places that I have lived in my career yeah so very very, very <laughs> cool probably probably the last place that you know if all of this gun legislation and everything keeps going down cheyenne will probably be the last holdout yeah no kidding but uh how terrific well i'm really really glad to see the resurgence of, of stag it's always been a good company and then as you say kind of went into a uh, recession if you will just kind of receded from view and the fact that you're back and got new products, and I know you bring a lot of energy to it because I know what you brought to other companies in the firearms industry. It's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, and, and Tom, for, for the customers that are, you know, just to our south here in Colorado, uh, Stag will be out. Same thing we did in Washington. If it happens there, we'll be out handing out swag to all those people on the long long lines, giving out candy bars and helping out the, uh, the people in Colorado, too, if it does start going there as well. Well, thanks for what you're doing, Ryan Donahue. Tell you what, I will see you in Indianapolis if I don't see you before, because you don't know I'm on this long cross-country driving trip. And I just checked. It looks like our path might take us right through Cheyenne in about a week. You're more than welcome to come and visit. I'm setting up a gun room right now. Sounds great. Ryan, thank you so much for your time. All right. Bye-bye. Take, take care. 866-TALK-GUN. 